Right. Numbers are starting to come up. I'm sure everyone else is the same as us that we haven't used Zoom in a while. So it suddenly uh, we got so used to using Teams that you open Zoom and it tries to update. So um, hopefully we'll have a few more uh, join us as we go along. Um, but welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Um, it's about the technology road mapping initiative that we, the NZTC, are running with the NSTA at the moment. Um, it's uh, sort of a series of uh, uh, workshops and uh, uh, an initiative that we're, we've been running now for a few months. Um, and this is really sort of like a, a follow up to a workshop that we had with operators. Um, uh, in it was the end of August that we actually did that to get some feedback. So, um, Lewis, if you want to go to the next slide. So um, it was really just to, to give you uh, a little bit of the agenda before I uh, hand over to Mark Wilson, who has kindly joined us uh, here today, um, just for an opening statement and to set the scene. And then what we will do, the NSTA send their apologies, but they are unable to make it today. But I am going to run through the slides that uh, they've provided for us that gives an, uh, sort of like builds on what Mark is going to say in terms of where we're at and the NST's, NSTA's outlook. And then I will hand over to Lewis, who will uh, run through sort of like the NZTC side of things, the scope of the project and actually what this uh, I guess the purpose of this webinar, which is about asking for technologies and this call for uh, technologies. What you will see at the bottom is there's a Q&A um, uh, function. So if you have any questions at all, please put them in that Q&A box. Um, and what we will do, we will try and uh, answer any questions as we are going, uh, going along. And then any that we don't get to by the end of this session, then we will come back and address uh, at a later date. You've probably noticed that we're recording the, uh, the session. You will have been asked that you're okay with that. So um, the session will be available um, to, to see if people haven't been able to make it. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Mark Wilson, who's the Operations Director at OE UK, who will give us a little bit in terms of setting the scene. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Nikki, and welcome to you all. And I'm really pleased to be able to come along today and join you all uh, on what should be a really energising session uh, and sort of hearing more about emission measuring, monitoring and how we sort of move forward in, in, in relation to those challenges. So as, as, as Nikki said, I've had a background in HC and operations now for a number of years, too many that I care to count, I guess. And I do recognise the challenges and the opportunities uh, that we can collectively embrace together to make sure that we can build the, the monitoring and the measuring capability. And you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, and it is basically making sure that we do continue to see the reductions in emissions that we have seen to date. And, you know, we should be justified and proud. We have seen some reductions in emissions against the 2018 baseline. We've seen 24% reduction overall on, on greenhouse gas emissions. We're flaring and venting equating for about half of that. So we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction. There's no there's no doubt about it. But many of those improvements are what you could call the, the quick wins, the easy to get after, the low-hanging fruit, those behavioural changes that we've seen on and offshore, but also the adoption of known technology that are out there and making sure that we can take forward the lessons that we've learned across the industry as well. Uh, and, you know, when I reflect back to my time uh, back in 2019, when I was uh, working for an operator and we was looking at how do we predict out to 2050, and we recognised we, we had to create a rather large spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheets. I'm sure many of you on the call, if you're dealing with emissions, may have many of those Excel spreadsheets or seen for yourselves. What we also recognize though, is the data was held in so many different areas of an organization. You'd have environmental teams having it, process engineers and other organizations as well. And those silos are thankfully starting to now come together. So we've seen those, those changes, in say from those behavioral aspects, that low hanging fruit, but there's more that we need to be doing. And we really need to be viewing technology as an enabler now to how we drive down the, the emissions. I mean, of course, we've got electrification uh, that's been discussed and there's other abatement technologies, but this is about harnessing new technology, innovation of which, you know, as a country, we should be justified, be proud 
of what we do and trying to move away from those large Excel spreadsheets and making sure that we continue to uh, be, be, be collaborative in, in, those, uh, in, in those areas. We do know, we do of course, so with the technology required to have the, the relevant support, the relevant enabling mechanism. And so that's why it's good that NSTA are actively involved in this as well from that North Sea regulatory viewpoint as well. So personally, I'm really energized to see what future technology developments will come, how that will emerge and how they'll be implemented in terms of, in, in terms of the industry. You know, and there's no doubt in my mind that to meet the target of net zero for 2050 or 2045 in Scotland, we will have to embrace technology to deliver those North Sea transition deal targets. We'll need the people, and thankfully you're here today to be part of that contribution, so thank you sincerely for that. We'll need the processes and we'll need the plant enhancements, but with driving that forward will be the new technology. And we should be, as I say, just as proud of what we've achieved so far. We are a collaborative industry, but now is the time to really look at how do we become even more collaboratively? How do we drive forward those innovations, that development and the use of technology to ensure that we can you know, meet those uh, emission measurement monitoring targets uh, as we go forward. There is a phrase that I like and many of you hear it, you know, if you measure it, you manage it. And in this way, we move that forward by measuring it and managing. So I hope you feel energized in about the next hour. You'll probably tell I personally am. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes forward, not just from this next hour, but what comes forward to the future. Because we can't just hang a, a coat up, we can't just hang our coat up and say, well, we've achieved 24% reduction since 2018, and we're getting close to delivering on the 2025 target. We need to be thinking way beyond that, of course. So look forward to it, and I look forward to seeing the, the, the presentations, and more importantly, those future steps as we get after the more difficult uh, areas of the uh, emission reduction campaign. So, Nikki, back to yourself. Thank you very much. That's excellent. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, as I say, um, what we we had a, a workshop back at the end of August with uh, we had 20 operators in the room to to talk through the monitoring and metering for the emissions and what is currently done um, and uh, what is needed to be done. And we had very good engagement uh, from them, uh, from everyone in the room. Everyone was uh, yeah very energized about the conversation. And just looking at the numbers here, it's you know, it's obviously the topic um, that uh, everyone's looking to discuss at the moment. So the NSTA um, were at that workshop and presented some slides. Um, so Doug Griffin from the NSTA presented these slides. So I am now interpreting his slides. So I do apologize if I don't quite get it right, but um, we've cut them down a little bit because I can't go into the detail, but uh, we'll, if there's any questions at all, we can always refer them back to the NSTA if there's anything in particular, but hopefully we can sort of cover the gist of this then. And then what I'll do is I'll hand over to Lewis who will uh, run into a bit more detail in, in terms of the uh, what, uh, the NZTC role is here. So from the NSTA, um, what we're going to look at is the, the stewardship, stewardship expectations, put my new teeth in, um, which really sort of touches on the ERAP, so the emission uh, reduction area plans, and then some of the future developments that are coming up that's sort of one of the things that's really driving what we need to do, what technologies we need to to look at for the future and how we can get ahead of the game in, in that instance. So um, the NSTD was agreed um, with government and industry in March 21. I'm sure you're all very aware of it. It's about the agreeing the reductions in the GHG emissions. So it's 10% by 2025. So we've we've only got 18 months to 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 get there, 25% in 2027 and 50% uh, by 2030. So it's all compared to a 2018 uh, baseline. And what that actually means is it's a 60 million tonne reduction in emissions to be delivered over the period to the 2030. So that other comment there is really just to give you an idea, these scope one emissions from the upstream oil and gas sector are currently at 14.5 million tonnes per year. So it's about 3% of the total UK GHG emissions. Uh, in terms of the requirements, uh, the acid stewardship requirements, um, there's already this uh, section three, there's already the expectation it starts with measure, measuring, reporting and tracking of emissions. 
So it has examples of the good practice. So it's about embedding uh, the reduction procedures, it's uh, implementation of the metrics and targets, um, and aligning and tracking performance against targets, but it's investment in and deployment of appropriate GHG emissions measurement technologies, which is really where we come in. NZTC is very much in uh, about pushing these new technologies and existing technologies and making sure that they're deployed and uh, uh, adopted. So that's within the uh, the current requirements. But what we're actually looking at is that uh, there's been announcements in terms of it's actually furthering uh, what might be needed. So the UK ETS uh, authority has uh, already said that the venting of CO2 from process plant is now included. That may or may not uh, affect everyone on this call, but the technologies can still be applied to uh, to this uh, this challenge. And then uh, it's about including the emissions of methane from the upstream oil and gas sector. This is the one that I think is, um, is foremost in a lot of people's minds um, as part of I guess the uh, the NZTC. We're talking to other comp or other organisations around the world that uh, are also looking at this methane monitoring uh, and uh, measurement. So you know we we have a good feel on on what that will actually be. But this is the one that is um, I won't say a concern. It's something that uh, we know is coming. So we need to be uh, be ahead of the game and actually get those technologies deployed and start reporting on these, these methane emissions sooner rather than later. And then really what it, the OGMP 2.0 is likely to become the minimum standard. So this is about uh, companies committing to establishing a methane reduction target by 2025. A lot of the people we are talking to are already there um, and uh, looking at they've already committed to this, but it's something that uh, should be made aware by everyone. If we can help uh, achieve this or um, by actually uh, finding these technologies that are going to support you on your journey to to monitoring and measuring them and then hopefully looking then at technologies that can actually reduce your methane uh, emissions or any of the other emissions that are coming uh, from your asset, then that's uh, a good place to be. So that was really it from the NSTA. It's a very reduced version of what they presented, um, but hopefully it gives you a, a better idea of where the NSTA are coming from on that and why they have engaged with us at NZTC. Um, and I'll hand over to Lewis, who's a project manager that's uh, he's looking after uh, this this project. So he will run through a little bit more about the, the project objectives and the scope and what we are asking from you all um, to support us in moving forward. So over to you, Lewis. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks. You uh, think you got the short straw with having to do NSTA slides on regulation and I get the, the, the jazzy bit of all the, the project scope, but never mind. Um, so the actual scope as, as Nikki says, we we hosted the workshop on the, the 29th of August. Um, we got a number of operators in the room and we asked quite openly, what's the challenges? You know, just be upfront, be transparent. Uh, and one of the themes that we found was actually sometimes the report mechanisms is a bound for how you actually report emissions. So we might have technology that enhances that reporting, but the way it's currently recorded in EAMS is restrictive. And I completely sympathize with that. But the point I want to make there as well is actually if as an industry we can demonstrate that we have the ability to more accurately measure and monitor our emissions, then we can make change and we can make effect in terms of the way we record these in EAMS. I know there's work in the background in enhancing that standard and that practice, um, but we need to get there as an industry to say and, and be proactive and say we have the mechanisms in place to better understand our emissions. And we've seen that through the conversations we've had with operators. There already is um, a technology that's been deployed that really highlights highlights that proactive approach. Um, one of the other things that we also want to do then is, is bridge that gap. So whilst I'm not saying that we're going to 
look at that regulation change and the way things are recorded, we are going to bridge the gap in methane, for example. You know, we know it's likely to come into the ETS scheme very soon. And one of the concerns that all operators have addressed to us is that, well, it's fine coming in and being taxed on it, but we need to know how to measure and monitor it accurately at first. And so as NZTC, we want to try and approach and the industry with solutions for that to, to close the gap, bridge the gap in, in, in your, your assets measurement and monitoring approaches. And then also we want to use sort of our network as well. So as Nikki says, it's great that we've got the NSTA involved here because the NSTA allows us to bring in a wealth of knowledge that they know, that knowledge accumulated um, from their technology programs that they run as well, but then also the knowledge we've got from NZTC. But in doing so, we, we're, we're limited by what we know so far, and then hence why we need a call. We, we need help and we need we need people to, to come to us to support us in this approach. And so you may have saw it in, the, in last week in our press release, we released our call for emissions monitoring and measurement technologies. Um, to, to get this tech featured in the, in the roadmap. So the idea being that, um, and we'll, we'll do a follow-up email for, for those that are on the call, just to, just to give the, the link for submissions. But what we need is technology supplied in, into this initiative that we can feature. We're agnostic as to where you come from. You do not have to be ends at TC funded at all. And we can take technology from all sorts of different avenues, whether you're commercial or whether you're sort of near an deployment, we can take that. But I'll go further into actual the, the sort of requirements for the tech and what we're looking at. So these are the three areas that we discussed with the operators. Uh, power generation being one, flaring and venting uh, was the sort of three topics that we looked at. The main headlines along the bottom there, and this is sort of the the, it, it's not bounding um, requirements, but requirements we would ideally like our technology that is submitted to follow. So we're looking for that TRL 6 to 9 area. We're looking for it to be nearly pilotable or ready to use on an operational asset. The reason for that as well is because we know that likely between now and 2030, when zero routine flaring and venting come into play, there's probably only going to be one shutdown. Um, so our timeline is, is, is quite narrow um, and we're looking to get stuff deployed now uh, as much as we can. And that ties into the point when ideally it should be retrofitable. Um, we've stated it on an offshore asset, but we, we're not limiting this to offshore either. This is this can be applied to onshore terminals as well. We know that it's far easier to deploy and field trial technology onshore than it is offshore. And so if there is applicability in an onshore terminal, we're more than happy to utilize that practice as well. And then we've noted there, it must work with a high degree of accuracy with the range of, of, of greenhouse gases that we've mentioned today. Um, that, it's a bit of a vague statement, but the problem is because different measuring techniques have different level of accuracies and different degrees of uncertainties. Um, and so it's very difficult for us to define uh, without going into each measurement method methodology, what accuracies we'd be looking for. So a little bit onto some of the findings that we, we had within the, the operator workshop. So for power generation, we're looking ideally at solutions that improves fuel gas or diesel metering and solutions that could help uh, with considerations for pre and post combustion factors, um, solutions that decrease measurement uncertainty, which is, is, is common amongst all three themes here. Um, and then measurement methodologies that move from that periodic surveys to that continuous monitoring. We know because of ETS and EAMS, you might only have to do uh, surveys every six months, maybe only annually. And so if we can move to that real-time measurement and, and understanding that is far more efficient and far more beneficial for an industry. Um, and then that, that kind of ties into digital solutions that increase that reporting mechanisms um, and, and reduces the gaps, the data gaps in what we know. Um, and in doing so, all that helps uh, the likes of OE UK with it, with you know defining where we're at as an industry and recording those those figures uh, sort of more timely. You know, this all benefits a, a wider group um, more than just your asset. 
In terms of flaring, so again, it was technology solutions that helped to determine the likes of combustion efficiency, your composition of your flare gas, your density of your flare gas, so what your 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 lower heating value of the flare gas that you're using, you know, is it 2% unburnt based on your combustion efficiency? Are you operating at 98% efficiency or are you operating a lot higher? And we do have some solutions there already, uh, projects that um, many people on the call today will, will be aware of and part of. But we are looking for this. For this, it's 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 an imperative space. We know this flare and zero routine flare in twenty thirty is a massive focus for our audience, and so we really want to help here. Um, again, it's solutions that decrease that measurement uncertainty, and solutions that not only measure emissions but quantify them too. Uh, and in doing so, it allows operators to align with OGM P two point um, and also the production of their methane action plans. Um, you know, flare, and we predominantly talk about CO two. We talk about you know ninety eight percent combustion efficiency from methane to to CO two. But we know that actually that's two percent unburned methane, which has been released. It's one of the biggest emitters of methane um, in activities in, in an offshore asset that there is other other than other than direct venting. Um, and so it would be great for, for us to, to start to align with OGMP 2.0 um, and, and all in turn helps helps you produce that methane action plan. Um, I should know, I know that there's a number of people on the call as well which are already aligned to OGMP 2.0, which again, you know, when we do this call, we're not just asking for technology providers to submit solutions, but you might be an operator, which is already working with solutions, which you, you think is good for us to be aware of. You know, this is a mechanism in which you can share your practices and share the things you're doing for measurement and monitoring, and it can be shared in, in, a, in a safe space, I guess, through this mechanism. It's not shared with your your company name and this is how X does it, you know, it's shared as, a, as an industry-wide learning. And then finally on venting. So we're looking particularly, so venting, and there, there's a hot topic around venting and measuring, monitoring venting from FPSO tank vents. We all know it's, it's, it's it has a large problem. And then again, that solutions allow the mapping of uncertainties to sources. So i.e. there's different wells with different compositions and how does that relay in terms of the vented emissions that we see um, and then finally, again, it's very much in alignment with flare, and so it's reducing that uncertainty, alignment with OGMT 2.0, and ability to not only measure but to quantify emissions. Um, so I've kind of I've kind of whittled through it. I know there's some Q and A's going on in the background as well. Um, like I say, we will do an email roundup after this call to give you access to that link to submit, and we'll we'll give a copy of this slide as well to give an idea. I should make it explicitly clear that this is just themes uh, and general topics that we found from the operator workshop. This is not bounded requirements for technology. And we do implore everyone to, if they believe that their, their solution fits with the areas that we're looking at to apply, you know, the only thing that's going to happen is you will be discounted because it doesn't align. That's the worst that's going to happen. So please, please do implore, implore people that you know with solutions to apply or you might be on the call yourself with, with a solution to, to apply. Um, so I realize I've rattled through it, uh, but we've got dedicated time now for any specific Q and A's. We can open open the floor to anyone who wants to join <clears throat> with specific Q and A's and take it from there. And Nikki, Mark, I don't know if, if you have uh, anything else to add. I think from uh, from our side, it's something that we've seen the feedback that we've had that, uh, and I know it's it's sort of like the NSTA's message is, you know, we report our our emissions at the moment, but it's actually, you know, we can't reduce the emissions until we know what it is until we actually measure them and have them measured accurately. And the more technology we can get out there that can do that, it means that not just with the, the CO2 emissions, but uh, be it NOx and SOx or even uh, with the methane, you know, once we actually quantify what those uh, those emissions are, it means that we can then uh, look at, at uh, methods or technologies that will actually reduce those emissions and we can meet the targets that have been set. So, um, so yeah, that was all from, from my side. 
I guess, Lou, what I would just add as well is just to let you know of other things that are ongoing that really map into the technology aspects as well. So there's a those that aren't aware, there's a North Sea transition a steering group made up of a, a tripartite arrangement with industry leadership and also representation from government at ministerial level. And within that uh, steering group, there's a, a group called the Asset Stewardship Task Force that has a focus on Stewardship Expectations 11, which is Emission Reduction Action Plans. And there's a subgroup that are looking at ERAPs across industry and how can we drive forward with this in mind, not just 2030, but as I mentioned, that 2050 targets as well. And then the other thing, just for awareness of the audience, if you're not aware already, that the, the NSTA have just launched for consultation what they call the OGA plan. Now that links to the OGA strategy. Uh, if you're not seeing that consultation, I'd encourage you to go have a look at it. It runs for eight weeks. There's a number of workshops taking place as part of the cons consultation on the 3rd and 13th of November. But that consultation, again, is looking at how the industry, through the NSTA approach, will deliver on net zero and some of the mechanisms to get us there as well. And again, this dovetailed quite nicely into that in terms of we'll have to drive technology forward, which talks about electrification, it talks about inventory, it talks about other areas as well. So just those two things to be aware of. Asset Stewardship Task Force, working under that North Sea Transition uh, Steering Group, and then the NSTA who uh, launched a uh, consultation on the OGA plan. Okay, I think we open up to the floor and, and allow for any any questions. I noticed there's some some open questions coming through uh, coming through the chat there. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah, I've done it. Sorry, we've got someone with their, their hand raised. Hi, Ash. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah, all good. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I was uh, going to ask, I mean, is the reporting and monitoring only focusing at this time for methane? No, 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 we're, we're not exclusively looking at methane. So whether it's CO2, NOx, SOx emissions, methane emissions, we're, we're, we're exploring the full range of, of greenhouse gases that we see offshore. And that is a hardware solution that you're looking for, a technology again, like a hardware? Uh, again, no, it can be software solutions, uh, which allow us, you know, the, the, one of the solutions that we have for flaring combustion efficiency is a software solution. Um, so yes, it can be, it can be either. Both, oh, I, okay, okay. Uh, but uh, well, we've got a software that is measuring carbon emissions for, well, that would be like scope three emissions for the oil and gas operators. So more targeting supply chain emissions. Would this be in this call related or are you only focusing on wenting, flaring and methane is what I'm trying to ask. Or because, we, you know, scope three emissions are also forming quite a significant part and that's not being accurately measured right now. No, I, I agree. Uh, so please, I, I just implore you to uh, to apply, and we can review it uh, and and see see how it fits in with with some of the challenges we've been faced with. But I agree. I know the number of operators have been asked to to look at scope three, whether it's campaign based emissions and, and whatnot. So uh, please apply anyway, and uh, we can we can review it. Oh really? Okay, okay, yeah, that's that's perfect. So that's what I was wanting to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I think one of the questions that's uh, open at the moment is um, is worth addressing. So can you please uh, confirm what will happen after submission if the technologies will be made public, uh, communicated in a certain way? So, Lewis, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, sorry, that's a bit of a gap from, from my side. <laughs> so let's make this clear. So um, on once we've done our applications, it closes on the 3rd of November. You have until the 3rd of November, Friday the 3rd, I believe it is, to submit your applications. We'll then take some time to review these applications. And if we need any further clarification, we'll come back to yourselves, whoever, whoever submitted it. What we will then do is produce a roadmap. And what that does is it, it highlights the technology solutions that we found to address specific problems. And that roadmap will be publicized both by NZTC and the NSTA so that we can disseminate this to industry. It's free to download, it's free to access, it's publicly available and it allows industry to connect with 
different technologies. So let's say I'm an operator who has um, scope three measurement problems with, with campaigns. I can see that Ash have, has submitted their technology solution and um, I've read it with the, with the roadmap and understand, right, this actually applies to me. And then as an operator, I can then go and reach out to that technology company and see how it could specifically utilize it on my asset. So it's bridging the gap between the technology that's out there and that's available and consolidating it into one place and publicizing it for everyone to access. I think there's another question there is, uh, is funding available to develop technologies further? It's a good question. So as NZTC, uh, a lot of people will be aware that typically we fund technology from a TRL two or three, and we take it up to, to field trial ready. This is slightly different in the initiative because we're looking for that deployment ready technology, the technology that's available now. So we're not specifically looking to fund technology to develop it, to address a problem. The only exception I would say to that is if there's a specific technology that we've not seen any other solution for, and it really does address a problem, we would of course not turn a blind eye to that. We would look to, to maybe have further discussions there because it does meet a need that we've not found any other solution for. Um, however, generally speaking, we're, we're not looking to fund uh, any technology development with this initiative. And then I think the final one is the for flare measurement, what is it meant by prevent the use of calculations? So it's, I guess in that it's more prevent the use of estimation um, and also relying on the assumed 98% combustion efficiency in particular. If we have technology solutions out there, whether it be CFD, um, whether it be specific measurement technologies, i.e. flare meters, um, which totally quantifies the gas that's going up the flare stack and then we've got technology which allows us to calculate the combustion efficiency that's what we'll we'll look at rather than uh, relying on assumptions so again the, the 98 percent is is an assumption combustion efficiency your maybe your your heating value of your gas your composition of your gas there's maybe large uncertainties in there, maybe the flow mechanisms of that gas in, in your system as well. There's large uncertainties there. So it's preventing the use of estimation and, and calculation where possible. Now, calculation is is very general. You know, calculation might be might be bound by a, a small degree of uncertainty, in which case it's more than accepted. Okay, yeah, another hand, yeah. Hi, Dylan. Hey, sorry. Am I not, my nose might be blocked. Sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> we're trying to focus on power generation. So the first question is, uh, what is the power generator size you are uh, uh, scoping in this uh, product? And secondly, uh, like we have a hardware, but uh, the casing will be like, it's specific to each environment. So does this uh, part will support the casing designs? Okay, I think I can answer your first uh, statement. I'm not quite sure on the second one. In terms of power generation size, we're not limited. You know, uh, typically on average, an asset's using around 30 megawatts, 20 megawatts is is the size. Um, but we're we're not limited. We you know we're not defining that, so uh, it's very difficult to answer. If I'm honest with you. And about casings, uh, does it require specific casing for the environment? In Could terms of, are you talking around like if it's ATEX certified for use offshore and, and things like yes, that? Yes, yes, certain like that. Uh, or installation aspect because where you're aiming to install it. Yeah, I think I think in, in that instance, we want technology that has been developed with the application in mind so that, you know, if you're putting it in a hazardous zone, you need ATEX certification. So you've done that already. Um, we might find it difficult that if we get solutions which don't have that gap, uh, sort of don't meet that need, they, they might get rejected because of that sort of lack. So um, yeah, it'd be good to to sort of look into that um, before you submit your solution to ensure that it's it's going to meet all needs of deployment. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. So I'll take one of the questions here uh, is about uh, the deployment on an offshore platform or a wind farm. Obviously, this call is is fairly specifically for uh, oil and gas operators. 
Um, so it's probably an offshore, but a lot of the technologies may be equally applicable to some of the new energy uh, side of things. You know, the NZTC are very much involved in uh, hydrogen and CCS and certainly floating offshore wind. So uh, we've found that a lot of the technologies that we've supported over the years have been applicable to these uh, these growing uh, growing areas. So um, while it's probably specifically uh, at the moment for uh, an offshore platform, it doesn't mean to say that it, it, if there's something that uh, is applicable elsewhere that you can't put it in. We, we try very much to take technologies from other areas and bring them into, um, into the, uh, I guess, the, this side of things. Um, and we have certainly technologies that we've supported that come from the likes of the whiskey industry um, that can be uh, applied here. So um, please feel free to, uh, to submit um, and we can then review. There's one here just on the uh, using the link for submission, but is there a template for submission? Yes, it's an online form. If you follow through the um, through the mechanism that we've got there, um, it'll uh, it'll give you full full details of the info that we're looking for. It's a very simple online form, um, so yeah, it's nothing complicated. Uh and then we have something here about the validation verification uh, side of things, which we'll undertake prior to issuing the roadmap. So it will be ourselves and the NSTA that are reviewing uh, the submissions. Um, we have a history of, of looking at, uh, I guess, all these technologies as they come through. So we'll have a real close look at it, as will the NSTA. Um, if there's anything that we need to then uh, come back to whoever submitted it to, to clarify a little bit more, we will do that before it enters the roadmap. What I should say is what we're looking for is it's probably not saying, um, you know, it, while we're looking at uh, all the technologies are there, it's the, it's probably more some of the, uh, the type of technology, not specifically uh, a company, but uh, it, it will be taken into account um, and there's a way of putting that into uh, into the roadmap. So uh, hopefully that's answered that question. And please jump in, uh, put your hand up if there's any any of these that we're not giving the the full answers to. I think there's a there's a good point uh, that's been been raised by Chris. Um, it's it's not a it's not a question, more of a comment saying that industry is is missing the the measurement transparency at the moment, and we need to move away from the the black box approach. So, one of the sort of tangents from from this exercise is the hope that with present presenting the the available opportunities, technology that's out there that can be utilised by operators we will start to have these conversations you know we will start to be more transparent about the measurement um, approaches that we're taking as an industry um, and it'll be a tangent from the deliverable that we're doing uh, like i say it's very difficult for us as ends of tc to ever make um, comments or changes on the way report mechanisms are but we'd be very happy to support tangent fallouts from this that, that you know, get industry together to say, right, we need to move away from this black box approach. And NZTC's roadmap with the NSCA has presented some solutions on how we can do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and, and uh, yeah. And then the last one we have up here is, are there any uh, IP implications um, so again, our history of working with uh, technology companies is that we don't touch on the IP at all. We're uh, we're very much um, looking at what the technology does. It's nothing to do with the IP at all. Um, and this would be no different to that. So uh, we're looking at technologies that are probably more or less ready for either trialing or actually uh, 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 ready to to be used. So we're hoping that all the IP has uh, is is uh, under control and um, that uh, it, it's not going to be an issue. But uh, uh, all I can say is NZTC have this this history. It shouldn't be uh, uh, any uh, any issues with IP uh, on this uh, on this project at all. 
we've had a, a question on uh, precision of methane measurements. And I think, uh, Adolfo, this is the, the entire premise around uh, around this initiative is to uh, is to answer some of these questions. You know, this question that you've raised around how do we increase the, the precision of methane measurements emanating from leaks or venting sources. We necessarily don't have the answers now, but hopefully through this collective effort, we will have the answers and be able to provide you some some technology solutions available to, to address that problem. Um, so yeah, thank you for your question. It's, uh, it set us up well. <laughs> So we have no more open questions in the Q and A. Is there anyone in the audience that would actually like to uh, to come off mute and ask a question? <laughs> or you can just put another one in the Q and A, and we'll answer as we go along. Right. Okay. Will we move to just closing remarks then? Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you very much for your, for your tech. Oh, sorry. Can we use radiation to monitor emissions? Uh, again, submit your solution where we can review it. We can understand how it might be applicable to, to what we're, the challenges we're trying to address. And we can take it from there. Um, thanks, Amesh. Um, so yes. Thank you very, very much for your time today. I uh, really appreciate it. We were kind of staggered by the response this got. We've, uh, we only launched the, the call for the webinar on last Wednesday and we had something like 120 people sign up um, and we've had 50 people, 53 people join us today, which is really great. Um, so we really do appreciate that. Uh, the, the success of this project is entirely dependent on the engagement we get and, the, and some of the solutions we get through. Um, so please, I, I do implore you to, to apply. Applications do close on the 3rd of November. As I say, um, myself and Nikki are available for any further questions as well. And so if there's anything that comes to you after the session, please, please feel free to, to reach out uh, and we can try and support as best we can um, with your submission. Um, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. I'm really, uh, I'm really enthused by the, the participation we've had today. So uh, I, th I thank you again. Um, and we'll, we'll follow up this session with, with an email with the, the submission link uh, and further details on, on what we've discussed today so that everyone's got it for clarity. And I'll just add to that, Lewis, that, you know, it, it's been great to see the engagement that we've had both with the operators and uh, if, through this webinar. There'll be more to come yet. Um, so uh, please keep an eye on uh, any of the, the social side. I'm actually doing a recording for a social tomorrow on this. Um, but uh, we will keep you up to date with the progress um, of the uh, once the, the submission date is passed and how we're getting on with the road mapping. And there'll certainly be uh, quite a lot uh, once we actually get the roadmap complete, both from ourselves and the NSTA. And the only other thing I would like to add is thank you so much for, to Mark for uh, joining us again on this. It was really good. It was a good insight into into things from the OE UK perspective, and hopefully we'll we'll have a few more of these yet. So great. Um, unless there's anything else, um, we can give you back a quarter of an hour of your day. Um, so thank you all once again, and hopefully we will uh, see you all soon and uh, we will be in touch very soon with the follow up to uh, the, with the slides and the link itself. So thanks. Everyone. Thank you.